So let's start by introducing some notions about design of controllers for nonlinear systems based on uh, Lyapunov stability methods. And uh, the idea is this. Uh, assume a structure for the controller equations that depends on parameters, on parameters of the plant, you should understand. Now, when you link the controller with the plant, you get a system where, uh, that you can define by a state model, is the state model of the closed loop system. And this uh, state model does not depend on you because you is imposed by the controller. And uh, the idea that we are going to explore is to select a candidate Lyapunov function. And uh, you don't know, assume that you don't know the parameters and you want to estimate these parameters. So uh, your controller that is based on estimation, estimates of the parameters is selected such that this candidate Lyapunov function will actually be a Lyapunov function. Okay. So we call it a control Lyapunov function. It's a candidate Lyapunov function that allow you to define the evolution of parameters such that it ensures that the whole system is stable. This said uh, in cold blood, like I'm say, saying, it's a little bit abstract. So uh, what I propose is to present you two examples. The first example is uh, very simple and uh, it's mainly an academic one. The second example is also very simple, but introduces a number of important uh, uh, issues. And as you can see, it can be applied with success to a real plant. It will be concerned with the control of temperature in a solar collector field, solar thermal collector field. So let's start by the first example. And the first example is very simple. Suppose that you have a uh, first order system and uh, you don't know the game. So your first order system is described by say a transfer function, B divided by S plus one and you don't know B. You must know the sign of B, whether it's positive or negative, and let's assume it is positive. Later, you will under understand why it's important to know the state of B, the, the sign of B. So our problem is to put a gain in series with the system, a gain K in series of the system, and to adjust this gain K. You want to adjust this gain K such that the between the signal R and the output Y, uh, you have a specified gain. So for instance, you want K to be equal to one divided by B. Now, if you know B, the problem is trivial. Just put K equal to one over B and the, uh, and the gain, the static gain of the system, becomes one. But the problem is that you don't know B. So uh, we have to design an estimator for B and we are going to do that using Lyapunov direct method. So uh, let's, instead of writing or using transfer functions, let's use a description in terms of uh, state models. The state model of this plant is very simple. Actually, it is linear. So uh, you can write a, an equation which is equivalent to this transfer function uh, by just writing the derivative of y with respect to time is minus y plus b k r. Okay. So uh, what you are doing is just assume that k is constant and. Uh, simply write the applied Laplace transform. So y of s 
is BK divided by S plus one multiplying R of S. And then uh, solve with respect to Y and apply the inverse Laplace transform with zero initial condition. So that's what you get. Now, uh, what is your aim? Your aim is uh, to adjust K such that the product BK is one. So let's introduce another notion, which is the reference model. Reference model is the model of the system uh, that behaves as you specified your system to behave. So uh, when you adjust K, you should end up with a reference model. And uh, so we have another model, which is uh, verifies this equation that you can obtain from the first one by saying that BK is one. And this is another model. So uh, I put an M, a subscript M, to um, emphasize that uh, this, the solution of this other differential equation is different from the first one. And in a practical situation, you can, uh, you must think that uh, the, this first differential equation describes the plan that you want to control by just adjusting this feed forward gain. And this is something in your computer that you can simulate. Now, uh, let's define the tracking error. And uh, this is the a quantity E, which is by definition, so these two, dot, two dots equal means by definition. E is equal by definition to the difference between the true, uh, true output of, of the plant minus the output of the reference model. Okay? And our aim is to write an equation that relates the tracking error as a function of the error in the parameters. So define the error in the parameters, I call it k tilde, as the true value of k, uh, sorry, the, the value of k that you, that you have minus the true value of k that I put a star. And the true value or the optimal value that we don't know is one over b. So uh, you decide you use some k, and you should use one over b that I call k star, the optimal value of the game. And you have an error. Now, uh, we would like to have an equation that relates e with k tilde. How can we do it? How can we do it? Sorry, this, the other two slides uh, are sought to have an interactive uh, lecture. Uh, you just pick up both equations that we have and uh, the equation for the model, for the, for the reference model, I write it in a slightly different way because I know that k star is one over b, so b times k star is one. So this is actually the reference modeling with nothing else. Now I subtract both equations, and when I subtract both equations, I get this other equation here. And then I observe that this is the uh, derivative of the output error. This is the output error minus the output error plus b, and this is the parameter error, parameter estimation error times the reference. So the so-called error equation that relates the uh, error in your estimation of the best controller gain with the output error is this one within the, the square. This rectangle, better to say. Now, now uh, we have we have an equation for E. That's one state. 
but uh, we have not said anything about how to select k. So the idea is to go on adjusting k uh, such that k approaches k star, the optimal value. Uh, and so, to, so as to reduce k tilde. So uh, we are going to do this according to the solution of a differential equation, another differential equation. And we have the freedom to decide which differential equations should our estimate satisfy. So, uh, to obtain a convenient estimate of K, a convenient differential equation satisfied by the estimate of the gain that I call K, what I'm going to do is uh, like is to think like this. So, uh, I have a state space made of two st state variables. One is the error E, and the other, the output error E, and the other is the parameter error K tilde. And I want this system to be asymptotically stable. At least, if it's not asymptotically stable, I want for sure E to go to zero so that our my uh, plant behaves exactly in the output as my reference model so e should be zero or close to zero so uh, what i do is i write a candidate lyapunov function which is a quadratic function in the output error and in the parameter error k tilde and I put here some gain that I write as one of a gamma. I could have, uh, I could have written uh, gamma, but um, you will see that it is convenient to have one of a gamma, provided that gamma is not zero. Okay, that's okay. So it's a, just a way of writing a positive gain. It must be positive because V must be positive definite. So, uh, Let's use the equation that we have for E and then postulate an equation for K such that this is actually a uh, Lyapunov function. Well, it's positive definite. It vanishes for sure for E and K tilde equal to zero, both of them. Uh, it's continuous. It has partial derivatives with respect to E and K tilde that uh, exist. And uh, the only thing that we have to check is that the derivative of V with respect to time is uh, smaller or equal to zero to ensure stability. And this, of course, depends on the equation satisfied by E and by K tilde. Now, we have an equation for E, but we don't have an equation for K tilde. So we are going to explore this fact. So let's compute the derivative. So V dot is nothing more than two multiplied by one of E E dot plus one over gamma K tilde, K tilde dot. So I'm just computing the partial, the, the, the total derivative with respect to time with V, with given by this function here at the top. Now, we have an equation for E dot, which is minus E plus B K tilde R. This is, this was the equation for E dot. And uh, now I rearrange terms. I rearrange terms. And uh, I put K tilde in evidence here. So we have uh, that V dot is the sum of two terms. The first term is minus E square. It's nice, it's a negative term. The other term, well, depends on the choice that you do, that you make for K dot. And K tilde can be either positive or negative, you don't know. 
So, uh, since K tilde can have any sign, and it's difficult to understand uh, what is the sign because you don't know the true value of K, perhaps one possibility is to select this term here between the brackets equal to zero. So, if you do this choice, uh, you equate this to zero and you get this equation for K dot. So, if, uh, sorry, for k tilde dot, but remember that k tilde dot, let's go back a little bit, k tilde dot is equal to k dot because k star is constant. So uh, by selecting k to satisfy this equation, we see that v dot is just minus e squared. And this is smaller or equal to zero. You can say, you, you might be tempted to say, but minus e squared is always negative. Well, you should think of v dot in the wall state space, in the wall state space as e and k tilde. And for k tilde equal, say, to five and e equal to zero, this is zero. So this is smaller or equal to zero. Don't forget that. Now, uh, what is the conclusion? The conclusion is that if you select your gain to be, uh, to satisfy this equation, then uh, the system composed of the tracking error E and the parameter error K tilde will be stable at least. Now, we still have two problems to solve. One problem is that uh, you don't know B and you have gamma B, but you know the sign of B, you know that we were assuming that B is positive. If B is negative, just put a minus here. And uh, uh, gamma is, can be anything that is positive. So, uh, gamma b can be anything. So you can replace this gamma b by another gain. gain. Uh, of course, you should use another letter, but I will use the same because it's an arbitrary gain. This is one thing. And this allows you to get rid in your adaptation law. This allows you to get rid of the dependency on the true parameter. The other thing is that you are uh, ensuring that your system is stable, but not necessarily asymptotically stable. So we need to uh, have some extra thoughts about this. Okay. So before we discuss this, stu this stuff of asymptotic stability, let's look at what is our, uh, what is the block diagram of our controller. And uh, you, you have your plan here, B divided by S plus one, and you have your controller, which is just one uh, gain in series K. And you want to adjust K, so I put this arrow here to see that you are, this is like a tuning knob, okay? So what is the structure of your controller? You have your uh, reference model that issues uh, an output YM, and YM should be compared with Y. So uh, you should adjust K such that Y approaches YM. So uh, you compute the error, the output error E, which is the difference between Y and YM. You multiply it by R, and you integrate it, and then you multiply by again minus gamma. That's the sense of having this equation. So if you integrate uh, both sides, you get uh, the, the, the integral of the derivative of k, which is k of t minus uh, the initial value, is minus gamma integral of the product E r. Well, actually, I'm assuming that r is constant. 
Now, uh, the only thing which is physical here is your plan, B divided by S plus one. All the rest is software in your computer. And your adaptation law is very simple, just a, a multiplication of the error by the reference and an integrator, and perhaps a gain here, constant gain here. Okay? This is very simple. You, you can think of this problem as the following. So suppose that you have a radio, radio, radio receiver, and you want to uh, adjust automatically the gain of the amplifier in the radio receiver, uh, such that if you are close to the antenna, or if you fa are far away from the antenna, so the gain of the system formed by the antenna that emits the signal in the distance uh, changes, but you want to compensate this change in gain by adjusting automatically the gain in your radio so that when you travel by car, you hear a constant sound depending on the level of sound that you want to hear and not on the distance to the antenna. So this can be can be a, a, a practical example related to this problem. And um, actually, this has been solved long ago, since at least the 30s, so uh, 90 years ago. And uh, they were very ingenious. They had no computers to do this at the time. Everything was based on analog electronics and uh, vacuum tube electronics, better to say. And they could solve the, the problem using a structure which is astonishingly similar to this one, uh, with something which is a kind of integrator. Actually, it was a low-pass filter uh, and a multiplication. And they were doing the multiplication with, using a special, uh, a special vacuum tube, tube vacuum uh, amplifier with uh, several elements, actually, with five elements. Uh, but uh, the mathematics was completely similar. Although they, they never thought about stability or Lyapunov, it was just a practical thing. OK, this is just a side remark. Now, let's, do, let's see two things. Uh, let's uh, simulate the system to see what, what happens. And the other thing that I want uh, to discuss is, does actually E goes to zero? That is to say, does actually uh, YM approaches Y, or Y approaches YM, when you adjust this K? Uh, these two things are important. Let's start by looking at some simulations. So uh, here, uh, I'm varying the reference according to a square wave. And uh, YM is just the response of the, the square wave. And uh, uh, you have Y, which is first order system, and a varying gain. And you can see here the estimate of the gain. And uh, uh, this estimate K of the gain is being adjusted such that, according to the rule we have derived, and you see that it um, converges to some value. And when it converges to that value, you can see that, at least qualitatively, Y is close to YM. Now, uh, in this case, we are, we're using this gain gamma. It's 0 0.01. Now, if you increase it by a factor of 3, so gamma becomes 0 0.03, what happens is that gamma is that K converges much faster to the uh, true value. And of course, the result is better. Uh, now, you might, uh, you might think, uh, why not to, instead of using gamma equal to 0 0.03, why not using it equal to 10 or 1 million? Well, uh, you should think that this is an ideal simulation. So the model is exactly, matches exactly the plant. 
In a true situation, the model does not exactly match the plan. So uh, there are some parasitic dynamics that appear in the model of the true system, or that appears in the true system, that you are not taking into account. And this parasitic uh, equation, if you increase very much this gamma that we call the adaptation gain, makes it, can make it become unstable. Actually, uh, the first trials on adaptive control uh, did not rely on uh, a serious uh, knowledge of the theory behind and led to a, an important crash of an aircraft, it was the X-15 aircraft in the 60s. And people were very, very much enthusiastic. The, this X-15 was embedding an adaptive controller, it was not this rule, uh, was a, another adaptation rule, just a gradient adaptation rule to decrease E, the tracking error, and the output error. And uh, it resulted in a crash. Now we understand that the dynamic of this system is very complicated. Let's look at the at block diagram. Actually, what you're doing is a nonlinear feedback. You are acquainted with linear feedback that you have studied in the basic course on control. But now we have a nonlinear feedback associated to this product and the integral. Okay, integral is a linear operator, but the product is, is not. And uh, so the dynamics of this is very complicated, although it does not seem. And uh, if you start in injecting here some uh, model dynamics, some extra poles, uh, even if they are very fast, if you increase very much this adaptation gain, you will be exciting these poles, and when you get the whole system unstable. So uh, there is a limit for the confidence that you have in your model that is expressed in, max, in the maximum value for the gamma that ensures stability. It's not easy to say, well, gamma should be less than something, a threshold. But at least in qualitative terms, we know uh, this result. Okay. So this is an important remark to, put, to help us put our feet on the ground. The other thing that I want to discuss is, does it really happen that Y approaches YM? Okay, let's look, let's look at uh, our, the, our expression for the derivative of uh, V, the time derivative of V. It's minus E squared, and it's smaller or equal to zero in general in the state space. So the standard Lyapunov theorem just allow you to conclude that the origin, that is to say E equal to zero, K tilde equal to zero, is uh, a stable equilibrium point, at least. But now you have the other theorem, which is the set invariance theorem. And the set invariance theorem says that all trajectories will approach the largest invariant set in which uh, v dot is zero, inside the set in which v dot is zero. So what is the set in which v dot is zero? Is e equal to zero. And uh, so all trajectories will approach an invariant set contained in a set where E is zero. That is to say, all trajectories will actually go to zero. And this allows you to conclude that Y is going to YM because the difference Y to YM is just E. So it's a, uh, the set invariance theorem that allows you to make uh, this conclusion. So this is, was, this is an important application. Now, you can say, but, uh, um, uh, is the set invariant is the largest invariant set in, inside the set where v dot is zero empty or not? Actually, there is at least one point which is e equal to zero. 
but there can be other points. Let's look at the equations. So our state equations is for, are formed by these two equations. You have an equation for E and an equation for K tilde. And uh, for E equal to zero, for E equal to zero, then uh, you, 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 in K tilde equal to zero, uh, then they both derivatives vanish. But, but you can have also another situation. Suppose that K tilde does not vanish. And, uh, but E is zero and the reference is zero. Then again, E dot and K tilde dot are zero. So what does this mean? It means that uh, you can uh, reach a situation in which E is zero, but K tilde is not zero. And this happens when R is equal to zero. But if you make R different from zero, then this no longer happens. And uh, the only possibility is that E is zero and K tilde is zero to have the equilibrium. So what is the conclusion? The conclusion is that for R equal to zero, you can reach this situation, which is a little bit funny, in which the output is tracking the reference model, the output of the reference model, but the parameters are incorrect because K tilde are not necessarily zero. This contradicts a little bit our um, heuristic thought about an adaptive system. You, you would probably expect that uh, an adaptive system will work as, as desired only in the situation where you have no uh, estimation error. But actually, it's not so. It depends on the excitation of the system that in this case depends on the reference. And in this case, it's very simple. Uh, provided that R is different from zero, you will get the output tracking, the output of the reference model, as well as K tilde going to zero. That is to say, your estimate of the parameter will be uh, the actual, will converge to the true value of uh, the gain. Uh, this condition that ensures that you have perfect estimation of parameters is the uh, so-called persistency of excitation condition. In this case, the persistence of excitation condition, condition is just R different from zero. And this is an important issue in uh, adaptive control. In this system, it's very simple. So let's now look at um, another example. And this other example will allow, you, allow us to uh, introduce another technique for to that is useful for uh, nonlinear control. Uh, the example is uh, related to the temperature control in a distributed uh, uh, solar collector field, parabol parabolic through. Uh, in Portuguese, through means manjedoura, because uh, this looks like uh, the, the issue that you use to feed cattle, to put uh, uh, straw to feed cattle. OK, so this is a. Uh, a global view of a thermal solar collector field. This is an experimental one, and I'm actually I'm going to show you some results obtained with the controller that we are going to uh, design, uh, obtaining this actual field. This is located in the south of Spain, in a place called Almeria. You have probably seen Almeria without knowing it because. Almeria, uh, in Almeria, or close, very close to this uh, field, there are se several um, movie sets where many movies have been uh, made, including part of uh, Cleopatra with uh, Richard Burton and Elizabeth Taylor, um, and uh, also many uh, uh, 
uh, Western spaghetti movies with Clint Eastwood and uh, other guys. Okay, so uh, let me describe the field. You have a storage tank with a fluid. This is a special oil. Uh, and you have a pump and a control valve, so you can impose the flow of this liquid. The liquid passes by uh, several loops of collectors, and it's collected here in this pipe. So you have these loops, actually it's 10 loops of, uh, of uh, mirrors in parallel. Um, so after passing uh, the, by, through the loops, uh, the fluid is heated by the sun, so the temperature at the outlet is bigger and you store it in the top of the, of the storage tank. And from the storage tank, you can use it uh, either for a steam generator or for a desalination plant. Uh, you can see here um, the detail of the mirrors. Uh, this device here is actually a sensor uh, that is connected to a PID that controls the elevation so the, the mirrors track automatically the sun. And uh, you can see there the, the tank, over there the tank. And this is uh, a picture that shows that the mirrors are such that you concentrate the light, the sun, sunlight. This is taken in the lab, uh, in a workshop. Uh, and you can see that you are concentrating the sunlight in a, in a spot here, and the, the pipe passes here, so the pipe is perpendicular to the, to the picture. Okay, this is the tank. This is a view of the desalination plant. Uh, that that um, field is somewhat old, but now uh, all over the world you, you find a lot of uh, industrial parabolic uh, through uh, solar fields and the interest on uh, thermal solar energy uh, comes from the fact that you can store energy you can so store energy storing energy is quite something quite important but that's another story so how can you model the field we have discussed that in the very first lecture it uh, the temperature along the field satisfies this partial differential equation and you can approximate uh, the temperature by considering points along the pipe and if you do uh, an energy balance uh, so x1 t is the temperature at position delta at time t x2 t this position is the temperature at position two delta at time t and so on. We have discussed this that in the very first lecture. And you can approximate the partial derivative to space with this by this term. So you get this equation here, where u is the flow and the temperature in the x, the state variables are the temperatures. Now let's be radical and instead of having many points i just have the input point and the output point so uh, my equation became, becomes just this the derivative of the outlet oil temperature with respect to time is minus u the difference of temperatures between the inlet and the outlet divided by the length of the field plus alpha r where alpha is a coefficient that is related to mirror efficiency. That is to say, uh, uh, if this alpha is affected by things like wind that uh, deviates the mirrors or by dust accumulation in the mirrors. And R is, is the solar uh, radiation. Now, we want to control this. So we want to drive U to some value. And uh, to do that, uh, now, the opposite to the first example, we have a nonlinear system because we have a product of u and y. So this is a nonlinearity. And to compensate it, I'm going to do a change 
of the manipulated variable. So I defined what I call a virtual control variable V, which is just everything here. But now I don't know alpha, so I put an estimate for alpha. And I put uh, hat to say that alpha hat is an estimate of the true value of alpha that I don't know, can even be uh, slowly time changing. I'm assuming that alpha is constant but unknown, and I want to adjust this alpha hat such that uh, uh, alpha hat becomes close to alpha. Now, uh, the idea is that if you know V and you solve this equation with respect to U, you can compute the physical flow as a function of V using this formula, which is just the solution of this equation with respect to U. So, what is the, what is the, the situation? So I define this virtual manipulated variable in this way. And uh, since alpha is alpha hat plus alpha tilde, where alpha tilde is the difference of the, of the uh, true parameter with respect to our estimate, then uh, everything here apart from alpha tilde is V. So your system becomes an integrator. So Y is the integral of V plus the integral of alpha tilde R. Suppose that you have no error in the estimate. So alpha hat would be equal to alpha, alpha tilde is zero, and uh, your system becomes, with respect to this virtual manipulated variable, just an integrator. Okay, let's see some, uh, let's see some uh, uh, experimental results to, to illustrate this. So what are we doing? I have my field. This is my oil flow, U. And this is the temperature that I'm measuring. I call it Y1, but using just Y. And uh, then I have this formula that relates uh, the flow with the virtual manipulated variable, the temperature that I'm measuring, and also the input temperature and the radiation. That's the radiation. So from V to Y, if we have a, a very good parameter estimate, this is just an integrator. So uh, if you apply a sequence of steps in V, and this is software, okay? This is uh, a mathematical, uh, mathematical uh, variable then the temperature will be a triangle because when you have a constant here you are going to have a ramp here it's not exactly a ramp you see that there, there is some it's a little bit round not much but uh, well in the first approximation you can you can accept this is a ramp so it's not too bad there are uh, actually remember that we are approximating an infinite dimensional system by just a system with one state because I'm just taking a state variable, the output temperature. Okay, so uh, this, uh, this other uh, graphics show what? They show the radiation and you can see here a cloud passing that reduced the radiation and uh, this formula here was were able to compensate for this variation such that from uh, v to y uh, it's a square wave so the flow was adjusted such that from v to y this is an integrator and you can see the flow the actual flow okay so see this is a physical variable that you apply to the system now, let's design uh, the adaptive controller. Uh, define the tracking error. R is the desired, uh, the desired um, temperature. 
So R minus Y is the tracking error. It's the difference between the desired temperature and the outlet temperature. And uh, a reasonable controller is to have uh, a proportional control. So uh, since your system behaves like an integrator, uh, you can see it here, well, with a disturbance which is associated to alpha tilde, then uh, if you uh, select uh, your manipulated variable k as k times e, where k is some gain, uh, you will end up with this first order system excited by the excited by the uh, estimation error. If there is no estimation error, this is nothing more than uh, something that tells you that the tracking error goes to zero with a time constant which is one over k. So it has a pole at k, at minus k, better to say. Now, the problem is that you don't know alpha, so you want to have a rule to adjust this alpha, and you want to have a rule to adjust this alpha such that this equation, together with the rule to adjust alpha, it yields a stable or asymptotically stable system. So, what is the situation? We have the equation for the tracking error that depends on the uh, parameter estimation error, and then we have an we need to define an equation for the other state, which is alpha tilde. Uh, and we have the freedom to define the adaptation law. So how, how are we going to do this? Uh, define a Lyapunov function, a candidate Lyapunov function. So again, we have a Lyapunov function, which is the square of the tracking error and the square of the parameter estimation error and some gain, one over gamma. Now, compute the derivative and use the equations for E. And if you rewrite it, you get this term here. So K is positive, and uh, if K is positive, then uh, this term is negative. But this term can have any sign. So uh, what you do is you select, you select alpha tilde dot, such that the term between square brackets is zero because you don't know the sign of alpha tilde. So you end up with this equation here. But if you think that alpha tilde, alpha tilde is, let's look at the definition, alpha tilde, the derivative of alpha tilde, if alpha, the true alpha is constant, the derivative of alpha tilde is minus the derivative of alpha hat. So, so instead of working with this equation, you work with this other equation. That is to say, alpha hat of t is minus gamma, the integral of the product of r times e. And with this choice, your V dot is minus K E square. And this ensures that the system is, by the Aponov uh, theorem, it's stable at least. But then you invoke the set invariance theorem to say that all the trajectories will converge to the largest invariant set where V dot is zero. But the set where V dot is zero is the set where E is zero. So, all the trajectories will converge to a set which is inside a set where E is zero. So uh, all the trajectories will converge to a situation in which E is zero. And if you uh, test the system, these are actual experimental results. You can see here, well, these straight lines, the set of straight lines are the reference. This curved line is the actual temperature. And you have the virtual control here, the physical control. Uh, I don't have a slide for it, but it's different. And um, uh, it, it's not a fantastic control. 
because you still have uh, some overshoot. And, uh, but it works quite well. One thing that you should notice is that it's um, simple to reduce the temperature than to increase it. And this is because when you are reducing the temperature, you are increasing the flow and you are making the system faster. So uh, if the system is uh, faster, it's simpler to control. And uh, that's why what explains uh, this difference in behavior when you decrease the temperature or when you increase the temperature. So, uh, what is the conclusion of today? The conclusion is that uh, by defining a priori uh, candidate Lyapunov function, uh, we can uh, design adaptive controllers by selecting the adaptation rule such that the candidate Lyapunov function is actually a Lyapunov function. That's a very strong idea. In the second example, we also introduced by this story of the virtual control, a way of uh, exactly linearizing systems. This is not, we have studied linearization based on Taylor series, but this is another thing. This is a change of variables by defining a virtual manipulated variable that you define using just software. Uh, and that allows you to uh, change your system such that it becomes exactly linear. That's so-called feedback linearization. It's also an important technique. We are just gra grasping the, sub the, the subject of uh, nonlinear control but these two examples uh, show you, give you a hint of important techniques. And actually, even using very simple ideas, very basic ideas, we could control uh, actual plant with a lot of economical interest. Uh, before closing, is there any question?